This week on the podcast, Carrie and I are joined by our friend Katie, the creator of DestinationSolo.com, and she's sharing her top five reasons she loves to visit Walt Disney World solo. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Pixie Dust Fan Podcast. Hi, I'm Francine. And I'm Carrie. We're two best friends who can't stop talking, usually about Disney stuff. Sometimes we have fascinating guests, and sometimes it's just us, but it's always positive and fun. We're happy to have you join our chat. Thanks for listening, and let's get started. Carrie, what's shaking? Not much. Welcome so to far. another week. <laughs> <So> <laughs> the, the, the day is young. The day is young. Mm-hmm. It's nice to be recording the podcast with a guest again. I do. I love it. We love it when we have guests here. So we're welcoming our friend Katie to the podcast. Hi, Katie. Welcome back. Hi, ladies. Thank you. I know. I know. And what are you guys like 190 some episodes in? Oh, my gosh. I've lost. I swear I I number them wrong. Um, (laughs) Somewhere around there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back, Katie. You were quite honestly, probably the inspiration to get us podcasting in the first place. So we go way, way, way back. Way, way, way back. I know. I mean, how really, truly, I mean, how long have we known each other? I, I, I'm, I don't know, a decade? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, we cruise together. That's like the best bonding experience ever. I know. I know. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's awesome what you guys are doing here. This is really cool. We're so excited to have you on the podcast. And oh, Katie, gosh. you know what? Because it was such a, we were talking about your website and it's funny because Carrie and I have such differing opinions on solo travel um, Mm -hmm. that this is just the perfect topic for us to talk about with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Your website is Mm destinationsolo.com and it's all about Mm -hmm. solo travel. Like how fun is that? Yeah, it's great. It's been, it's really, it's been something I've been thinking about doing for a while. Um, And, you know, I had a, a, a website in, in a in a previous life and in a previous iteration and what I really enjoyed about it was connecting with people um, I've always liked writing I've always liked you know that sort of content creation and, and sharing with people and getting to know people through shared interests and and really as you know I, I travel solo um, quite a bit whether it's where I live in Florida or you know around the country and I'm looking to plan some you know trips in the coming years around the world and just how many people do travel solo as I'm, you know, researching and talking to people. It's really a lot. It's really growing. I think I read an article that, you know, the Google searches in the last two years have gone up something like 700% <gasps> for solo travel. Wow. It's shocking. And, it, and it's not just, I mean, I, I happen to be single, but it's not just single people. It's, it's, you know, people who maybe your partner or spouse or doesn't want to go where you want to go or can't go and you, are able to, or you have different in- interests or whatnot. Um, and it's really opening up to a lot of people that it's, it's, it's not scary. It's not intimidating. Um, it can be, it, it can be a ton of fun. Yeah. That's so, that's so fun. Now, when we first cruised together, we were with family and friends. Yes. Um, so there was, there was a whole bunch of us, but mm-hmm. I often think about doing like a cruise solo. I almost did yeah. it solo when I was doing the Virgin Voyages that I did. Uh, yeah. But I ended up, I ended up having friends on board, so it didn't quite feel solo. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I always think cruising solo would be so fun. Oh, one of my, one of my favorite solo trips and this was I was thinking about this last night when I was preparing and making notes I know it was before I moved here and I moved here seven years ago to Florida so somewhere between eight and ten years ago and one of my favorite solo trips was about four nights at Disney World and then I did a three-night cruise it was a blast and I've done other solo cruises since but it was it it's just it's so much fun it's enjoyable it's so much fun um, I, I'd highly, re- I mean, I highly recommend it to anybody really and truly it's, it's, I love it. So we kind of bonded our cruise that we talk about that we went on together and, and, and we were all on was a Disney cruise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we bonded over our Disney, um, our love of Disney and that's kind of what we prepared. Well, we didn't prepare. Carrie, what did you prepare? Nothing. Um, <laughs> <What's> here, <laughs> Carrie here, <laughs> she's here and awake on a Saturday morning. Here, yeah. 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 Um, (laughs) What you prepared was your top five reasons for traveling to Disney solo. Um, 
And yeah, I'm kind of excited to hear if they're if they're different than because so, I travel solo to Disney. So does mm-hmm. Carrie. Carrie's mm-hmm. done Disneyland a few times solo. Okay. Um, so we're kind of interested to hear what you love about it, and then how it how it fits with some of the stuff that um, that we love. Yeah, absolutely. Or uh, don't. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, one of the things um, I would say, you know, with Disney solo, but you know, any solo travel in particular, is the flexibility. And especially I know those of us who know Disney well and are Disney fans, I think you guys probably have a similar experience when you go to the parks or on the cruise line with people who haven't been before, maybe haven't been as often as we have. Um, you kind of get into that tour guide Barbie mode of, yes, I'm here to, you know, direct everybody. And, and sometimes that means, you know, you just, you don't get to do the things you want to do, which is fine. We, you know, that's fine. When you travel in a group, we've got to make accommodations. Um, but being solo, you can, you can do the things you want to do when you want to do it. And one thing in particular, I love about solo traveling at Walt Disney world is Epcot in particular, and Mm -hmm. being able, able to just kind of wander around that world showcase area. It was one of my favorite things I did in one of my first solo trips. And I try to do at least a, a portion of it, um, during every trip. In fact, I'm going next weekend and I plan on doing the same is just wandering around the different countries of the world showcase and going into the pavilions into the stores into if there's little movies or attractions or just and just being able to sort of wander in through there I mean I don't I had been to Disney quite a bit in my you know late teens early 20s but I don't because I was with family and in particular people who had younger kids I just didn't spend as much time doing it and you know like a moron I didn't realize for instance now where the Ratatouille attraction is now you know, in the, in the, the part of the France pavilion, I didn't realize it went back, you know, it, it, it kind of tucked in there. Um, same thing with Italy. I didn't realize until, you know, I'd probably been a handful of times that you can go right back in through there. And it, it was, it was just really pretty and really beautiful. And, and I love that. Yeah. I, it's funny you say that because I, I spend so much time, especially when I'm solo, going through some of those countries and those pavilions and Carrie I think it was you that showed me a couple of places when we were together and you were like did you even know all this was back here and if you're not if you're not with people that are interested in that stuff yeah true you you don't go back there like even the stores I had no idea whatever that favorite story is of yours Carrie I didn't know it goes all the way back and around the pavilion you just walked in and was like hello kitty and monchishi I'm out of here (laughs) (laughs) that store is enormous and you don't realize it until no, you, you get inside you don't. and you keep walking and walking like they have the whole pearls in there. You can pick a wow. pearl and they that resumed. I, the last time I was there, I saw them oh, um, oh. doing the pick a pearl, which was nice to see that back and ringing the bells and all, all that fun stuff. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's- the flexibility for me is a huge one. Um, yeah. I, I agree with you. I think that just being able to go and do whatever you want and decide for me, it's like deciding it at the last minute. Cause I'm such a last minute person, like right. getting up in the morning and being like, mm, I don't think I want to leave at nine o'clock. I want to get to the park at 10 or some, even just something yeah. like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, and it's, you know, it's a lot easier to find a reservation for one person or to find a, you know, uh, if you're if you're doing the Genie Plus route to find an availability for one person, you know, I mean, it's 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 easier to to do those sorts of things too. Oh, um, for sure. Which sort yeah, sort of dovetails into my next point of, you know, that's th- those things are can be easier for you as a solo traveler. Even finding, you know, even finding spots to watch the fireworks and some of the evening shows. You know, again, if you're not looking mm-hmm. for a spot that seven people can see fairly, I mean, as one person, you can kind of squeeze in or navigate wherever you wherever you want right and it just makes it so much it's just it's easier to do those sorts of things and to do them on the fly and easier when you're shorter well yeah, that's a good point <laughs> for me <laughs> to scoot <It's> you. In. <laughs> for me to scoot in and you're a little bit shorter like you just look like in someone's extra kid <laughs> you Let scoot up to you scoot up to a family you just look like you just look like somebody's kid there <laughs> It's my strategy, secondary strategy to that one. That's oh great. Gosh. That's, That's great. 
That's so true. It is true. It, it's much more easy to, to find a spot and get in, in for parades. I love doing that. Like, right, at, you know, you just kind of walk up and stand in behind. And as long as you, you have enough room for one person, you're good. You don't have yeah. to worry about finding room for the whole party. For sure. Absolutely. That's a big one. Car- Carrie being in the extra kid. That's a fun. <laughs> well, now we'll all, we're, we'll all know where to find you. Carrie. Yes. Well, like I can find the, the glass half full in every situation. There you like, go. That's, the, that's, the, that's it. <laughs> this is scoop on up the, somebody's family. That's right. Yeah. Right. See? Oh, that's that's awesome. great. <laughs> I would say another, another thing that I like to, to share with people about, um, solo travel at Disney in particular, and I'm going to do a lot of content to this related to my trip next weekend is dining solo. And I, I, I think that people might be thinking, well, if I'm going to go solo, my only options are quick service. And I would encourage you to not limit yourself to that. Um, some of my favorite, uh, some of my favorite dining experiences period at Disney world have been solo. I did solo at California grill. It was fantastic. Mm. San Angel in Epcot is one of my favorite places. I'm, I go there nearly every trip and I'm going this next weekend. Really? Uh, I've never been in there. I'm dying to try it. Oh my goodness. I'll have to take you for the first time. It's fantastic. The food is, the food is delicious. The margaritas aren't bad. If that's, <laughs> if that's your jam. Um, really good. And you know, I, I, I think people get intimidated by the idea of, of having a table service situation alone. Don't be. It's awesome. The flying fish is another great one. I had an incredible meal at the flying fish. Really? Delicious. Wonderful. And I find too that a lot of times, you know, you get more attention from the servers because it's just you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, without, without asking, I've also been seated at some really great tables. Like California Grill, they put me by the window. Ooh. Which I was happily surprised. Because sometimes as a solo traveler, I mean, sometimes they put you at that, you know, that two top table around the corner from the entrance. Beside the kitchen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and obviously, you know, don't be, don't be shy. Don't be afraid to ask. You might have to wait a few minutes or a little extra, you know, to get a, to get a seat that you want, but you know, in St. Angel, for instance, I mean, I, I like to sit in, you know, kind of by that railing area. Um, to watch little- the boats go by. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's, it's a nice atmosphere. Um, I also like the table service, you know, whether I'm by myself or with a group, but in particular on my own, you know, it's, it's a nice, you know, 45 minutes, hour, however long to be off your feet, take mm-hmm. a break, relax. Um, I've done solo Apollo on Disney cruise line. I just, I really enjoy it. I, I do. I mean, I solo dine where I live all the time. Um, you know, I, I like, we have this really awesome Mexican place in town. Um, and I'll go there like on a Saturday or Sunday and bring my Kindle and eat my chips nice. and cakes, have my taco and, you know, enjoy so, myself. So do you bring a book? Like what, cause that's, I know that's what people think. Like, yeah. you know, do you, do you bring a book? Like, what are you looking at? Or because that seat across from you is quote unquote empty. Yeah. It depends really and truly. Um, usually when I'm somewhere like Disney, um, I mean, I just throw my Kindle in my bag because it's not, it's not heavy and it's not big. So that's easy. Um, easier than an iPad or something like that, which can get kind of heavy and kind of bulky. Um, often at Disney too, I use that time to, if I have Genie Plus, I'm looking for maybe my next attraction time or researching, you know, if there's, for instance, if I'm at Animal Kingdom, when's the next Lion King show? When's the next Nemo show? Kind of plan, use that time to plan my afternoon or my, you know, later, later on in the day. Um, it doesn't bother me personally to sort of sit there in silence. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but I, I do encourage people, you know, if you think you're going to be anxious about it at all, you know, bring your Kindle, bring a book, bring, you know, even pull something up on your phone and whether it's right a book that way or the news or whatever it happens to be, then you can, you know, not feel like you're sitting there on your own. Um, it doesn't bother me personally, but I, I would encourage people to have, have a backup plan right? Keep yourself a little at loose ends. It's almost like a, like you can eat, that's how you ease your way in. Like your yep. first solo dining, like bring a mm-hmm. book, bring a Kindle, mm-hmm. bring something that you can sort of 
you don't have to kind of stare off into space or whatever, but it has your attention. Um, and then you can, you can, as you get more comfortable, like I, I love sitting at the table by myself and just looking at all the people around. Like, I'm not worried about them looking at me and being like, oh, she's by herself. I'm looking at them thinking, oh my gosh, you've got to clean up after that kid. This kid's crying. You know, you're, you and your husband don't look like you're getting along right now. Yeah, like, yeah that, that couple bought this morning on the bus. <laughs> to the and you're great. Then you have a moment that you're grateful that you're by yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I well, love looking around and thinking, what kind of day have you had? Because mine's been fabulous, but you don't look like you're getting along. Like, I love watching. Oh, yeah. the just carry on the people watching. watching. The greatest. It truly yeah. is the greatest. It is. It is the best. And that you know, it. You're right. It's one of the. It's. It's the best. So it's. It's so funny. It's so funny. Yeah. And I. I find like there have been people on my solo travels, where they want to. It's almost like they look at you and and they feel bad that you're by yourself and they want they want to talk to me or care and I'm, and I'm like it's nice but it's okay like I I'm I'm all right you don't you don't feel we need we need to talk like even the last time I was at uh, Riviera by myself at the quick service these two ladies next to me they were lovely but they had finished their lunch and struck up a conversation and we chatted but I felt like they they stayed longer because they felt like they had to keep me company I was like ladies I'm okay thank you like Exactly. But, yeah. Yeah. Almost it's, like, it's almost like you want like a sticker on your shirt being like, I'm fine. Everything yeah. Well, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, Carrie, I, how do you feel when you're dining alone? Like, I know. I think I, I'm okay with it. But I think the thing, like the thing that I think, like when I'm alone, like I pro- like I can't, people are probably looking at me and laughing because I'm probably like laughing to myself. Like if, if I'm looking around and I'm like people watching or, you know, the crazy things that, that make me laugh on my head, like I probably am like staring into nothing, like with a humongous smile on my face, like grinning to myself because in my head, I'm probably just, so they're probably thinking that poor gal's alone probably because no one will travel with her. <laughs> like, she's talking to herself over there. She's over there talking to herself and giggling to herself. So. I can't say that I probably like when I'm when I'm away. I probably just do, I probably just do quick service. Like, well, yeah, I probably just do quick service. I don't know that if on my Disneyland travels, if I've ever went somewhere table service. Like, I like the fact that I don't have to do table service. <laughs> I can just do whatever the heck yeah, I want. For sure. Yeah. But, yeah. but now that you're a signature dining gal and you've experienced yeah. some of these signature meals, maybe next time I'll be going to the the, the Brown Derby all by myself. <laughs> Well, yeah. And, and a lot of those places too, I know Flying Fish, I believe Brown Derby, I'm drawing a blank on the others, California Grill, I know as well. I mean, if you're solo, I think there is a greater possibility that you could walk up. There's probably a greater possibility mm-hmm. that there's like a bar seating type of a situation. And most, most places will serve the full menu. At the yeah. bar. And yeah. so it doesn't bother you to, to sit up there, which actually that can be kind of nice too, if you're if you're feeling like you want to even bridge that gap a little bit more of, of feeling like you're going to be awkward or lonely is, you know, sit up at the bar and, and chat with the bartender for mm-hmm. every now and again. I mean, that can kind of help you feel like you've got some interaction if that's something that, you know, yeah. gives you pause. So for sure. I love, I actually, I enjoy that at like the outer rim at the contemporary. Mm. I've gone there uh, a couple of times when it's been raining and I need to charge my phone or something because they have plugs right at the bar. So I just plug in and I sit and chat with the bartender. Yeah, I can, like, see, that's the thing. And so if I'm, I'm dining by myself and I'm thinking about this conversation, I'm like laughing and grinning, thinking of Franny going up to the bar going, howdy, bartender. <laughs> <laughs> you got any Bud Light? Lime? <laughs> oh my gosh and that's so true that's pretty much it (laughs) it makes a difference yes what was that was that number three i think on your list that was number three yeah um the other another item i was thinking about was you know when when you're going solo you can choose what's important to you and you can do that whether you know for your resort for instance so is is price your most important factor is is location your most important factor is amenities your most important factor what are you looking at because for instance you know you might feel like well I want to splurge a little bit because I'm I'm solo um and maybe I'm not maybe I usually go with my family or other people that I'm paying for and so I'm paying for meals I'm paying for park tickets and 
yes, this broom is pricier per night, but I'm also not paying for this other list of stuff. So in the end, does it, you know, does it make sense for me maybe to stay at a little bit of a nicer resort? Um, if you want to do other things like any of these other amenities that the deluxe resorts offer, the spas or the, the dining amenities or any of those sorts of things, you can certainly visit those if you don't stay there, obviously. Mm-hmm. But if you're on site, it does make it a little bit easier, a little more convenient. So you can, I, I think you can have more, more flexibility because again, you know, for in terms of where you stay, because again, it's, it's all based on what is your priority. And, or maybe you're looking at a value resort because you're, you've got a pretty good schedule of other things you want to do. Maybe dessert parties, the fireworks or signature dining or any of those things that you feel like you want to spend your money on and you don't want to spend it on your resort. Great. Go for it. Um, and I, I, I feel very, one of the reasons I keep going back to Disney beyond loving it and loving the brand and, and all of that is as a solo female traveler, I always feel very safe and comfortable at the resorts. Yes. Um, they're well lit. There's lots of people around everywhere. I don't feel, you know, some hotels or some places you go, you know, you feel kind of like your room is in the back of a dark hallway somewhere. And, you know, I, I just don't feel that way. Yeah. Um, when I'm at Disney. So I always feel very safe, which I think is a, is an important thing to consider. That's a huge one. And and you're right. <clears throat> Excuse me. There haven't been any Disney resorts I've stayed at where I kind of didn't, even when I was at pop century in the back of the, like the back building, yeah. it was still so well lit. There were people around. I know there's cameras everywhere. Like right. I, I just, I don't worry. I don't worry. I mean, obviously I use common sense, but I don't have the extra worry when I'm in the resorts, when I'm there by myself. I'm not, um, I don't feel uncomfortable at all. Same. Now, what resort are you staying at when you go? Old Key West. That's where I just was. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah. I loved it. I, I love Old Key West. It's beautiful. It's such a great spot to just chill outside of the parks. Mm-hmm. That, um, that was big for me. That was big for me. Carrie, where's your favorite resort to stay if you're by yourself? The Anaheim Marriott. (laughs) (laughs) Disneyland. If I could afford the Grand Californian, it'd probably be that if I was by myself because it's closer. But the Anaheim Marriott is my go-to for my solo traveler. Traveler time. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I probably would pick this. Like, if I... If I was a a solo at Walt Disney World, like I've stayed there probably a few nights, but I don't know that I've really done. I have stayed a few nights here and there. Um, I would, I like Saratoga Springs. I'd want to be in Saratoga Springs in a preferred or whatever they call those rooms. And I'd want to be able to walk to Disney Springs every day if I wanted to. And that's, that would probably be, you know, my ideal or like the beach club because that's my favorite beach club or Saratoga. Yeah. And the, both of those are so great for solo activities. You're right. Walking mm-hmm. over to Disney Springs or even walking over to Epcot. Like, I love staying in those those resorts around Epcot because it's just so convenient to just walk in there at night and grab a bite or, or whatever, no matter what my day plans were. Right. And, I, and, and to be honest, that whole walking over to Saratoga Springs or walking over to Disney Springs as much as I want to, I'm like, I've romanticized that story in my head from like the old Disney Spring, Disney, downtown Disney days when it was just so easy to get over there. And it was so nice when you're over there. I haven't, can't say that I've done it with the new craze of Disney Springs. I don't know if I'd want to walk over there every day like I used to when I would stay there because it was just so close and so awesome. Like when you go over there now, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. So crazy busy. Crazy busy, so yeah. much more busier now to Disney Springs. So, like I said, I've got that, I've got that, me- those memories of of years, you know, that where when we've stayed there, we've spent so much time at Disney, downtown Disney. But that's what it was. I'm calling it that because that's what it was then. Right, but yeah. you like so if you're in those preferred rooms and you're down at that bridge to walk over mm-hmm. to Disney Springs, you're right next to Earl. Yeah, of Sandwich. you're having Earl of Sandwich all the time. You're going over to check yeah. the pin store every day to see what's new. Yeah. I probably, and that's the thing, I wouldn't, I probably would do it the way that I did before. Like, I probably wouldn't really go too far into the new area other than to go to the boathouse or, or look for a certain store or whatever. I'd probably, you know, stay in the, the old school part of <laughs> the OG area. Yeah. That's such a great point though, Katie. Like just being able to pick your resort and your location and everything without worrying about some, because there is whoever you travel with may have different needs about what they need in a resort and it it can make you, you end up staying somewhere maybe that isn't 
your ideal place. Well, and I think the big thing, like you said, the splurge, right? Like you'd almost think like, but you're staying alone. It's going to cost you more. You're not splitting, but you can't, if you want to splurge and stay somewhere and nobody else and, and the rest of your group does, you're going with girlfriends or whatever. They don't want to like, you could be like, well, okay, I'm going and I'm staying where I want to stay. Yeah, yes. so. absolutely. Absolutely. That's so true. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And, and I like what I like too about, you know, I agree with you about Saratoga <clears throat> beach club, pardon me, boardwalk, even just to, you know, speaking again of, of having the Kindle or something with you, if you're looking you know, one of my favorite things to do too, is just find a spot, a bench, a seating area at the resort. Animal Kingdom Lodge is perfect for this at the resorts, um, at the parks, whatever. And just, just sit there and, you know, just take a load off and relax. People watch, get a beverage, get a snack. And cause I think so many of us, you know, again, depending on who you're with or the kind of trip you're doing, you can kind of rush around and, you know, we're going here and we're going here and now we got to go here. And it's nice to have trips where if, if relaxation is something you like to do, you have that option. You can just take a minute, walk around the boardwalk. I mean, the boardwalk too is an awesome place to just sit and hang out. Um, They've got that huge grassy area kind of behind the, the, the main building right there. Yes. That's, That's beautiful awesome there. Yeah. And I I've, I've just sat there on the ground before and just. Yeah. For 15, 20 minutes. And That's nice. my favorite thing to do is just like when I'm by myself is just to find a seat and a, a drink. Like even if it's just like a nice cold bottle of water, I find a bench and I just watch the people and I just sit and, and just take it all in. That's like yeah. one of my favorite things to do. It's awesome. and I, I think the deluxe resorts built so many spaces like that. Like when, like all of the little areas to sit and you think like we, most people never take advantage of it. Right. Because you're always, we're always on, on the go trying to get everything wrangle the family, whatever. But yeah, like to think that you actually go in that little lounge that's not meant for overflow when it's checking It's for people to just chill out and nobody ever chills out in them, but you yeah. just get in there and chill out. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've gone over, especially the beach club or the yacht club, sometimes after Epcot when I'm going to take an Uber or something back to the resort. And I'll go and just sit in the resort and wait for kind of the, the craziness of the of the drives. Because, you know, they, they increase the price of those lifts right after fireworks and stuff because there's such a, so many people are trying to get them. So I'll just walk over to the resorts and find one of those little spots and sit there for half an hour, 45 minutes, let the crazy crowds die down before I call my my lift it's fun and depending awesome. on where you're staying you just wish you could stay there yeah <laughs> in pretty that much. chair in the beach club lobby <laughs> yeah. the one that looks like a seashell type of thing you just wish well, can i just couldn't i just stay here tonight instead yeah. of getting back to where i'm just really go asleep in this chair and we'll yeah. stay yeah we'll <laughs> be fine for sure i always <laughs> wonder too how do they determine that like who's really loitering or who's like a guest just killing time like, because you got to think, like, why aren't there so many more, lo like, local loiterers just chilling, spending the day at the beach club in the lobby? Like, how did they tell the difference? Or did they even care? I don't know. I don't know, because I, I feel like if I lived, if I lived in the Orlando area, I would 100%, like, <sighs> go and, like, get a coffee and sit in the lobby of the Grand and just hang out for an hour. Like, yeah. So may maybe as long as you're just not being disruptive or, you know. Yeah, maybe. maybe these, are the, thing. these are the things I wonder when I'm sitting by myself, people watching. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I often wonder too, like, are you on day one of your trip or day six of your trip? Like sometimes you can tell, like it's a fun game oh, to play when you look at the people and you're like, oh yeah, you just arrived. Look at you. You got some spring in your step. Yeah. Everybody's got all this energy. You're rah, rah, let's go. <laughs> and then you can tell those people that are on like night six and they're going home tomorrow and the mother's flipping out and the kids are tired and cranky. <laughs> so true they got bag everybody's got bags under their eyes they're oh just yeah <laughs> they're shuffling along their feet hurt oh yeah. my gosh it's always that's that's a fun game um yeah that's, that's so <laughs> it's true that's very true. very true so what is your number one this would be number one right we've done yeah i would say my number one is don't discount special events because you're there solo 
I am doing the Christmas party solo this year. I, I'm going to the Halloween party. I'm going with my brother and his family. So I'll be with them for that. But I am going to the Christmas party solo. It's a blast. It's so much fun. And again, you think, well, it's a holiday thing. And it's, you know, some, does that mean, you know, it's more groups or, you know, do I have to be in a group to have a costume for Halloween or whatever? I'm here to tell you, you do not. The, those special event parties are the greatest. They're so much fun. I say it's worth the money. And, and I think it's just, it's such a fun thing to do solo because there's so much going on, you know, there's special parades and special merchandise and special, you know, events going on or, you know, stage shows at the magic kingdom there. You know, I think, I don't know what they're going to do this year for Halloween. If you guys have heard, but didn't they do the Sanderson sisters Mm -hmm. last year? Yeah. Um, So there's always something, I mean, there's always something that they're doing there. And um, I, I would, I would encourage people not to, not to pass on those. Interesting. And, That's something I've never done. Oh, it's I've never really thought of it, but now that I think of it, like it would be the best alone. Really, you could see so you could get so much done too, because that's the worst thing. You've only got so many hours, and you've got five people to figure out who's doing what and where you're going, and huh? somebody's hungry and and whatever. Like they obviously didn't prepare properly for this. <laughs> There's no eating. We're not sitting down for a while. You got to re- eat and run. No. There's things to do, <laughs> characters to meet, candy to collect. That's right. I'm not sitting down for 45 minutes. You were sitting down for 45 minutes to wait for the parade. I'll get you a churro. That's yeah. it. Exactly. Jeez. Exactly. So when you're on your own, you could be like, you could have a serious checklist. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can check a bunch of things off your list. And, and even like, I know, um, and I'm not sure what the schedule will be for this year at the Halloween parties in particular, but, you know, they usually, as I remember, will have like, you know, they might have the, the Magic Kingdom stage shows. They'll have one earlier in the evening and one later, maybe like at 10 o'clock or something. Um, and, you know, I would imagine that most people, I've heard most people go to the first of those because mm-hmm. it's early in the evening and they maybe have smaller children with them or people who are going to get tired. And so they're like, we got to cram everything in at the, the front side of the party. And those later evening events are basically empty because yeah. people started to clear out. So then you can have even, you know, even a, a, a better viewing spot, even a better viewing location. And, and because again, you're not, I mean, now if you're tired, that's another situation, mm-hmm. but if you're not, you know, again, worrying about other people and what their stamina level is and how they're feeling and you can knock out a ton of stuff. And it's so, I mean, just being there in the magic kingdom with that atmosphere, you know, especially at Christmas, that holiday atmosphere, it's so, it's just so much fun. So yeah. I would highly, highly, highly encourage people to do it. You'll yeah. Love it. You know, when you think about it, it's so true because you think like, what are your priorities? There's so much that you can do at those parties and you can't do it all. Yeah. So when no. you're there with a group of people and you're trying to figure out what's the consensus. So if everybody's consensus is they want to ride the rides, if everybody's consensus is we want to get a good spot for the parade and sit there for two hours to find it but you really want to go and meet all the characters. You don't care about anything else. Right. You don't, right? If the consensus is we're sitting for the parade, we're all sitting for the parade and, and you right. don't get to do that thing that is really the priority for you. Yeah, so like even if you want to wait 45 minutes to meet your, or an hour to meet your favorite character in the Halloween costume and that's the only reason you really want to be there, then you can do that, right? You're, you know, you yeah. have to convince everybody else to do it. It's a different story. Do you know I've never met a character like I've never stood in line at the Halloween party to me. And I would, I think I would like to, I did at I, Disneyland, but not at Walt Disney world. Yeah. I I'm trying to remember the last one I stood in line for, but I know to your point, I, I don't think it was with a group for that very reason, you know, yeah. it's like, I mean, do you want to spend, and especially because, you know, you, if, if you're using the party ticket as your, daily entrance ticket into magic kingdom and maybe not buying a park ticket that day. Um, you know, obviously you want to get your money's worth, but it's, it's, it's the perfect opportunity. Yeah. Because you whatever, feel, whatever your jam is, you feel guilty, like saying to somebody, do you mind if we wait an hour so that I can get a picture with snow white in her costume or whatever it is, right? right. right. Like you don't want to ask people for, to do that. But if you're by yourself, then yeah. You get to, uh, that's one of the things I do love on the solo trips too. Like I can be walking by and be like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen her out or, or that character out in so long. I'm going to just, I know I was planning to go to lunch now, but I'm going to stand in line for an hour instead and get my picture taken. 100%. 
that, that flexibility is so it's so key it's so key to a solo trip it is key and you can and you can you can as you alluded to earlier you know on the fly if if your plan you know for instance for even for my trip next week i have a, a broad idea of what i want to do but if later in the day comes and instead of going to Hollywood studios, I feel like going to animal kingdom before they close for the day. Mm -hmm. I want the flexibility to do that. Um, you know, those sorts of things just to be able to, to change your mind on the fly and say, Oh, actually this sounds like fun. Or, you know, one of my favorite things to do is, is, you know, ride the monorail around and just kind of resort hop and, you know, Me too. The different monorail resorts. And I mean, I've spent hours doing that. Me until too. And it's so much, and it's, and then again, you, you know, you don't feel guilty about asking somebody else to, who might not, that might not be their jam, um, to do that. It's, it's, it's very freeing. And I think people feel, you know, what I want to empower people with, with solo travel is, you know, don't push past those sort of anxious feelings of I'm doing this on my own. Um, you know, you will like, you'll, you'll feel very independent. You'll feel very empowered. You can do it. It's, and, and I think Disney is a great entry point because it, it Disney World in particular, because it is such an, e when I say easy vacation, I mean, if you stay on property, mm -hmm. you're all you're in it, you're all there. And I think it's a very, it, it's a good entry point if someone is, is considering solo travel to other places or in other venues. Um, it, it's a good place to kind of dip your toe into the water. And you can, you can be as introverted or extroverted as you like, if you want to have spa time, pool time, shopping time, dining time. Great. If you want to, you know, sit at the bar at the flying fish and strike up a conversation with the people next to you. Great. I mean, go to Disney Springs and go to the, the, I can't, this is it AMC, the theater. Yes, it's the theaters. What's one of those dining theaters. That's a great, like, if you're, you know, you've got kind of a space in your day and oh, I've always wanted to see such and such go to the dining theater. It is what a time to be alive that we can go into a movie theater and order a burger and a glass of wine and watch like the Marvel movie. Like, I mean, it's so much fun. And so, and you could do that at one thirty in the afternoon on a Tuesday, if you that's, felt like, why not? That's such a good point. Like it, really dining in, in a movie. And I've never done that. I've never eaten in a movie oh, theater, so like, have, like a meal. We have a, we have a place down here um, near me. I'm, I'm in the, uh, the Fort Myers area, but in Naples, we have a dine-in theater and it's awesome. It's so fun. Yeah. And people go to the, like it is, you're so right though about it being empowering. Once you've done that first sort of solo adventure, even if you decide you don't like it, you do feel good that you did it. Like it's surprising what you, what you can do when you just give it a try. It is. And, and I would also say too, you know, in, in relation to that and in relation to dining solo as well, you know, like I, I, the first few times I did it, I felt a little self-conscious in terms of, you know, will people be looking at me, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. They don't. People are much more concerned with themselves than they are with you. Exactly. <laughs> and, so, and yeah, and someone might glance over and think to themselves, oh, they're eating alone. I wonder why. And then they move on. Yeah. I mean, really, really nobody... Nobody cares that much. And the people who would care, you wouldn't want to be friends with them anyway. So who cares? So exactly. And you know, the other thing that I realized, there were so many more solo travelers that you will notice when you are solo. 100%. You have no idea how many people are there by themselves and or are there with other people. But those people just aren't with them at that point. So it could be a husband and wife and their three kids are on vacation and the kids don't want to go out, whatever. And the husband's like, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go have dinner. Yeah. Like people don't know if you're there with a group of 12 people and you've left them back at the resort when you're dining by yourself, they don't know the, <laughs> that you're there for the whole trip by yourself. And right. you're right. They don't care. Nobody cares. Nobody cares <laughs> as much as you think they do. Yeah. It's, it's amazing to me how self-conscious I was about so much of it. Mm -hmm. Um, until until I did it and then I was like yeah nobody really nobody cares nobody cares yeah no. well and it's so funny with your uh, you when we were talking about the dining um you know I uh or I'm, I'm a cruise line rather um I took a solo cruise this is probably five or six years ago and 
um, had a great time as always. It was wonderful. My stateroom host was wonderful. This, this wonderful lady. And at one point she kind of looked at me concerned and she said, are you okay? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm just, so I didn't, I don't know what narrative she caught, you know, created for, for me. Again. I was, you know, had, had some sort of big life event and I was, you know, going off on my own or whatever, but she's like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. So I'm just wondering if you were like, all Stella got her groove back on your cruise and you were getting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's so funny. But other than that, truly, it's just, you know, and again, I think, you know, traveling solo, one of the things I share with people, and I I have blog posts about this um, on the site now is, you know, you do have to, you do have to keep safety in mind and all those other things like we talked about with the resorts. I mean, you know, you just people get on vacation brain and they do things on vacation they wouldn't do at home. But I do think in particular, you know, if you are a theme parks fan, if you are a Disney fan, and you know, it is a great place to to dip your toe into the solo travel water because it is. I've always felt very Absolutely. safe, and they do a they do a great job of keeping it a tight ship. Yes, so, for sure, yeah. for sure. And now, where is so that that was a good that was a very good list. Um, where is your next solo adventure going to take? Like, is there some place that you think to yourself, I really want to go here, but it even as a, as a seasoned solar tra traveler, it makes you a bit nervous to think about. I would say I, I'm, I'm planning on going to Europe solo next year. Nice. Um, I considered it this year, but the, 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 the plane tickets are, as you know, not nutty. Yeah, they're nutty. And so, um, what, what intimidates me a little is I, I mean, I've been, I've been to Paris, I've been to Belgium. Um, I've been to parts of Europe, but not, you know, not on my own. And, and so that's where I think I will, I will likely cruise mm. first just so mm. that, you know, not, not that I can't do research, um, on, you know, resorts or where to stay or whatnot, but I think that will allow me to do, um, you know, be more in a, in a controlled environment, so to speak, where I don't have to worry about my accommodations and I can see a little bit of here, a little bit of there, and then decide, oh, I really want to come back and do such and such. Um, yeah. So I, that I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm not nervous to do it. I just know that that will be a little more, a little more planning since I haven't, um, since I haven't been, but I think cruising in Europe will, so will, will be a great intro into that space. So I think, yeah, that's a, you know what, it's a great idea because I think in terms of solo travel, um, from a sort of quote unquote safety perspective, it's always focused around where are you sleeping tonight? Like yeah. that's usually where the safety aspect comes into your brain about the planning. So when you, when you do it on a cruise that, that takes that piece away from you and you can go and enjoy the spots during the day, but not have to worry about where am I sleeping tonight? Right. Or where is, you know, doing the research or having your travel agent do the research of, you know, what, what, what part of town is best, what, what area mm -hmm. should I be in, et cetera, et cetera. So having that kind of off your plate. Um, I am helping to do later this year, some, some solo trips in the U S um, you know, going um, I'd like to go, I went to Savannah, not in a solo trip, but I went with my cousin a couple years ago and I'd go back to Savannah, Georgia solo. Mm. It was fantastic. It was great. Um, I'd like to go to Charleston. Um, I'd like to go to, and one, one of my trips, I probably will get to, at this point, it'll probably be next year, um, is to go to Washington, D.C. and do all the different monuments and the museums. And I, I think museums in particular, if, if history and that sort of thing is something you enjoy, I think those are perfect for solo trips because if you're like me, I like to want, if I'm interested in the exhibit or the area, I want to read every plaque, listen to every mm -hmm. news explanation of, of what it is. And that can be difficult when you're with a group. Um, and there's all these, you know, different things I want to see in, in Washington, D.C. in particular. And I think that'll make a great. So, yeah, so. that's a great thing. It's a good point. Like when you're if you're interested in the sightseeing and the history. And I think about when I went to um, I went to New York with my business partner and she's all about like, I need to see these places and see the shows and see this. And I'm like, meh. I, like I'll meet you so that we can eat um, no. because if you're going to eat and I'm going to eat, why don't we eat together? Sure. But otherwise, like 
The only monument I wanted to see was I wanted to see the library where Carrie from Sex and the City got married. That was pretty much my <laughs> whole... A.K.A. <laughs> the Ghostbusters library. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you do. You know, yeah. you know, so yeah, I took my picture there. But otherwise, she was on her own to go do what she wanted to do. And yeah. I went to the Disney store and, and the Levi's store in uh, Old Navy. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> but it's good because those are like what you like. It's not necessarily, you can be the best of friends, but you may not have the same, the same interests. Right. right. Well, and that's a good point too, you know, that I hadn't really thought of until you mentioned it is, you know, when you think solo travel, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you are staying there on your own. You arrive there on your own. You're going to leave there alone. It could very well be, Hey, we're, we're in this spot together, but I have, I want to do museums and sightseeing and you want to do shopping or you want to yes. do whatever. And so you can go your, you know, your separate ways during the day um, and meet up later for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of great reasons to do it. <laughs> I'm excited to, to read your adventures and, and you've got some amazing posts um, on your website right now with tips and tricks and, and different things for people to consider to do solo travel. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to put some more up this month and, and in particular with uh, the Disney trip next week, I've got a, it's what I was doing actually this morning as I was watching the coronation and I will do later today is kind of make a list of the things I want to cover and the things I for sure want to take pictures of or video of. Um, so I'll be sharing, I'll be sharing that there. My goal is to have enough video content to do a YouTube video for this trip. Awesome. Hey. So I've never done that before. So this could be like a kindergartner's YouTube video. So just fair warning, this could be real, <laughs> real pain. You can do it. You um, can do it. Those are the best. Those are the best. The the authentic, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it anyway videos. But I'm here. Yeah. yeah. I, I love watching those. I love one. In fact, one of the posts I'm going to do is, you know, both for Disney and the non-Disney trips. I mean, I, hang, I have a handful of YouTube creators that I really like watching their videos. And it's like, oh, that place looks super cool they made it look really interesting really and it's, and and whether it's a you know a so-called high quality production or not i always enjoy it. i mean it's always interesting to to get somebody's actual perspective not from the perspective of the venue or some place more official but it's yeah real yeah the real deal oh that's exciting i can't wait to follow along now where so people can find you on destinationsolo.com <laughs> but what is your handle is instagram your primary place to follow you Yep. Instagram is, is the, the social media app that I've, I've chosen because I feel like it works best for what I'm sharing and kind of the community of people that I'd like to meet and connect with. Um, and the, the links to that. And I also have a Pinterest page where I'm going, I've just started that very, very briefly. Um, I'm going to start to develop that out more. And then I also have a, a YouTube link that goes to an empty page currently, but by the end of May, there will be something on there. Keep your expectations low, but there will be something <laughs> I love it. Something on there. So yeah, all those all those links you can find. It's just right at the top right of my destinationsolo.com website. So That's and then if you if you like what you read, um, if you want to, you know, be updated with new posts and whatnot, um, I do have a an option where you can subscribe. Um, I won't I won't spam you, I won't send you 75 emails a week. Um, just if you want to kind of keep an eye on on what's going on and where I'm at and what I'm doing, you can subscribe there. That's awesome. And thanks for, I don't think I subscribe, so I need to do that. I'll do that right after we, I didn't, I didn't see the subscribe, but I will. That's okay. It's at the bottom of the page, which honestly, this is one of those things. I think I was talking to you about this, Fran, that, you know, I've been working on the site for like a month and a half. And at some point I was like, oh, just, you just have to publish the thing. Like just, just hit publish. So I don't love that it's at the bottom. I might have to adjust that going, going forward, but it's a it's a work in progress, but it's been really fun. I've really enjoyed it. It's so much fun when you build a website and then and then you tweak it as you go. Like that's how that's how it goes. Like I still don't like my site. I would I need to rearrange and do all sorts of stuff. But you do what you can, and and again, like people don't care. They just want the that's content. Just, yeah, it's... yeah, that's just, yeah. I, I'm over here stressing about what what shade of blue is the background on this post? <laughs> like nobody else cares, but me, zero people care. Yeah. Zero. It took me a long time to get to that place where I was like, I don't think I like this font. And I can't tell you how many times I changed the font on the entire website. Um, because, and I was like, I don't think people really care. They just want it to be big enough that if they're reading it on their phone, they can see it. Like, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just want to be able to see it and have it easy to navigate. And that's about it. 
Yeah, it's pretty much. Yeah, it's amazing what you discover when you start poking around at that stuff. We we fuss over silly things sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad you got it published. I'm glad it's up and I'm glad you could come chat with us today. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It was good to reconnect and chat and and hopefully one of our one of our trips, either cruise line or park or something, will overlap again. That'd be fun. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Okay, we're at that time of the podcast where we share our pixie dust for the week. So something that brought us joy and and just happiness. So we'll let you go first, Katie. Okay. Well, my pixie dust is I actually just flew back on Wednesday from going up to the Midwest, Midwest to see my family. My niece was the lead in Annie in her <gasps> oh, play. And she was phenomenal. It was so good. And so just to, to see her, I mean, you know, she's almost 14 and just, just blossoming up there and loving it. And, and uh, she told, uh, she told her grandpa that she is nervous backstage, but when she gets on stage, she's not nervous at all. And it was, oh. it was awesome. She was so and to hear her sing, it was just, it was really, really cool. So that was, that was an awesome time to, to get to see her do that. So. Oh, that's so awesome. That is. Oh. I love, I love Annie. Annie, that, that movie has a place in my heart. That was and I, right and I haven't my to age. Or anything for a while. I, for, I mean, so it was, it was cool to, to experience it again, because I just hadn't seen the, the movie or the stage play or listened to the music for a long time. So I'm going to have to listen to it now. <laughs> this is what Carrie's doing after we stop yeah, recording. I loved it. Oh, I loved Danny when I was little. I always kind of that was definitely a staple movie we would have watched. I would have watched a lot when I was little. So cool, awesome. Carrie, what's yours? Mine's a pretty easy one because this week we had a staff, our annual staff appreciation event, oh. and um, usually it's like our HR department puts it on and they, they try, they do a good job, but like not very many people go like, it is kind of sad. Like we use our biggest lecture theater and there's like people sit around the, the, around the edges. Nobody sits at the front, like the middle of the whole room is empty. And um, like this year, our department, which is about 80 people. And I'm sure a few other departments really like encourage staff to go like, you know, this is for us. Like I go all the time. I think I've missed it once over the years. Um, and so the room was jammed and it was Aww. alive. It was buzzing. People were, and usually like when you go, because there's so few people, you do feel like you don't know anybody. Cause you know, we've been there for many, many years, but there's so many new people. So the people that have been there for a while, look around and they don't know anybody. They don't see their colleagues cause nobody really, not very many people go. But this time there was a newbies, but all the oldies were there. It was just like everybody was hugging and laughing and having a fantastic time. Like there was legit a buzz I haven't seen ever probably within the staff community at my work. Like it was unbelievable. And everybody like hopefully next year people will go again. But uh, it was it was truly it was truly awesome. So, so many people connected with people that I've known for 20, like some of them up to 20 years and I, be and I haven't seen them for the last three years because of what was happening and, got, and got to reconnect. It was, it was awesome. And I think everybody felt the same that I did. So it was awesome. awesome That's awesome. so great. That's great. You sent me, you sent me a selfie from there and you would grin ear to ear, but uh, are you going to tell them about the selfie? Well, they probably won't get it. So the, every year they well, have... good, because I didn't get it either. <laughs> every year they have a guest speaker. So the guest speaker this year was Mike Pinball Clemens, and he's a Canadian uh, pro football player who's like now like the head of, of, the, of everything. Like he's just, he's awesome, but he's always been motivational. Like from where I grew up, like I've known him since I was, like he's probably about 10 years older than me, but I've known him since I was young. Like we knew when he was... And like football, like when he started out and, and he's, he's just an awesome guy. So he was our guest speaker. So, uh, they, uh, when he was done and would like to thank him, they got our, uh, our halftime, uh, squad come out from our, for our basketball team. And the place was just booming. Like they were everybody, like the, the rapper was on tables and they were throw they bought like little HR swag and they were throwing it out to everybody. And so he was running around throwing it out. So he couldn't stick around afterwards, which it's a good thing because he, we would have, everybody in the place would have wanted to like shake his hand and get a picture with him. Um, but he was handing out the swag and he was running up the aisle because we were in a, like a tiered lecture theater. 
and I had my phone ready and the gal that I was sitting beside, she loves like Canadian sports and sports in general. So he, when he came up, I had my phone ready and I was like, selfie, can we do a selfie? So we got to do a selfie. So me and my colleague and, and uh, Mike were like just grinning ear to ear and we got this awesome selfie. So I sent that to Fran and she's like, who dat? And I'm like, are you not Canadian? <laughs> Did you not grow up in Ontario? Like, I can see maybe if you were from another place, but like, we're kind of the same age and we both grew up in Ontario. Like, how do you not know that this is Pinball Clemens? I, I had no it. idea. I'm like, oh, she looks like she's having fun. I'm glad the event turned out well, blah, blah, blah. And then we're talking later. I'm like, so because I'm thinking she tells me about people she works with. So I'm like, oh, now I can put a face to the name. So I'm like, who is that in the picture? She's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I have no idea. Yeah. 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 Good. So that was, good a, it was a, it was that a really was good. good week. Then the Wednesday was not very productive <laughs> at work, but, it, but, and I've been, you know, catching up since, but it, it was, uh, it was awesome. So that's good. How about you, Fran? What's your pixie dust? Oh, my pixie dust. Everybody's been following my saga. My pixie dust is that this week I finally evicted the squirrels that have been, <laughs> tormenting me, killing me, entertaining me, all of those things. Uh, they finally, finally left. So I've been chronicling it on my Instagram stories <laughs> and yeah, lots I, of... I was telling you before, it's, it, I, I was not, I was not enjoying it because I know it, it was, it was a, a, a trying time for you to say the least, but I did enjoy bringing up my stories every day and thinking... Seeing what's happening. What's happening with as I told you, Squirrel Gate 2023. What's, <laughs> what's happening today? I can't like, even tell you how many people like, message me and we're like, Fran, your stories are killing me. Like, I'm howling over here. And I'm like, well, I'm glad you're all laughing. I had to take, are. like, I had to take a sleep aid the one night because all I could hear was scratching in the walls. <laughs> it was, like, I can't, like, it was an emotional roller coaster for us. I can't imagine how it felt for you. Like, like and and they were so cute like you sent a couple pictures when they were all like peeking out of the little hole and i'm like oh they're so adorable these cute little babies and then and then but then you feel the other side like you see the destruction and then you're like and then you see that mom fran kept sending me pictures of the mom like going like this to her like you know eyeball to eyeball (laughs) the mom from outside the the window was she was coming to the window and looking in my window like i was on a conference call and there's a window (laughs) right next to my desk and i looked out the window and she was literally just sitting there staring at me and like as if i know what you did and yeah watch, <laughs> and i'm coming to get watch, you what you, you yeah watch oh watching yeah your sleep we're coming in the walls oh my gosh <laughs> i could like seriously well because when the dude was out here to try and install and it was all very humane um yeah. he installed a one-way door so once they came out of their hiding spot they couldn't get back in which was great uh but when when he got the first one out it it immediately went to this place under my gas meter and then he says he says to me do you know you have a hole in the wall i was like what he's like where all those wires go in there's a big hole that's why they went there i'm like oh my gosh so they had they had multiple entry they had multiple points um like I was like oh my gosh so then he thankfully he was fabulous he thought I was a bit nuts but he was fabulous um so he he sealed that off and put up some extra wire so that they can't they can't get back in there and nothing else can get in there but yes so they're gone I did see one stop by my front door uh on my ring camera like this? this morning so <laughs> He was just sitting there on my front step, like, hello, <laughs> we're fine, <laughs> whatever. Our new place is great. Thanks yeah. Well, Not apparently, really, but it's great. the squirrel guy saw them, the mother, take one of the babies down the street to somebody's barbecue. Like they they must have like a cover Definitely or something a over down, the barbecue. A down, a downside, it's downgrading. <laughs> it's a downgrade from their penthouse in the sky in my deck to the barbecue down on the front porch. But uh, whatever. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. So they're gone now. So hopefully, I can sit out on my balcony and uh, enjoy it uh, this summer. <laughs> and so yay, pigs! You're gonna, you better watch it. You're gonna get a bad Yelp review from these guys. <laughs> <laughs> One star, but not recommend. <laughs> seriously i had to move to the barbecue down the street (laughs) one star (laughs) oh my gosh so that was my pixie dust it's been an eventful week but katie this has been so much fun catching up with you and and hearing about your travels 
it's uh we'll have to have you back on after you mm-hmm. you've done your trip and hear about it and okay. and what was different and how much how much fun you had where you ate can't wait to hear that <laughs> i would love to that'd be great yeah thanks for having me this is super fun super awesome fun. thank you so much and uh we'll see you next week guys bye thanks for listening to the pixie dust fan podcast we hope you enjoyed the episode Make sure you're following us on your favorite podcast player so you'll get a new episode every week. And find us on social media too. We'd love to hear from you. Till next time, remember, you are never too old to be young. Chase your dreams and design your own happily ever after.